Hello and welcome to using Redis in PHP. Now this course is intended for developers having programming experience in PHP and it covers the basic aspects of working with Redis using PHP client Redis. Now once you have covered the course you will be able to understand how to install a Redis server on Windows as well as Linux operating systems, how to connect to a Redis server locally as well as to a remote server. We'll be also covering on how to store data from your web forms directly to Redis sets. We'll also explore working with lists, hash, sets and sorted sets. Apart from this, we'll also see how we can set expiry and make a particular key persistent in Redis. So all this and more coming up in this course. Now that we know what Redis is, let's see how we can install this on Windows. To install Redis on Windows, we first have to visit the URL github.com slash Microsoft Archive slash Redis slash releases. Now on this URL, you can visit the section which says latest release. Do note that this installation is only available for 64-bit version of Windows. So here, as you can see, I'm on this URL and here we have the latest release mentioned. You can download the Redis 64-bit version MSI installer and once downloaded, you can simply double click on the MSI installer and that will launch the installation. As you can see over here, click next accept terms and conditions, click next and uh, it's going to install it in the program files directory and you can also add this to your path environment variable and this is the port number where Redis is going to run and uh, it will be available for receiving the requests at this port number 6379 and over here is just setting the maximum memory limit 100 MB is good enough for our demonstration purposes you can override this by selecting the set max memory limit. Click next and then click on install. And there we go. We have successfully installed Redis on our Windows system. Now in the next lecture we'll see how to install a Redis client for PHP which we'll use to communicate with the Redis server that we have installed on our Windows system. In this lecture, we'll see how we can install Redis client for PHP. So in the previous lecture, we installed Redis on our Windows system. And in this one, we'll be installing a Redis client for PHP. So first thing that we need to do is visit redis.io slash clients and then download the latest release for PHP. So here you can see that we are on redis.io slash clients. And here you can select the language for which you want to install the client like for PHP you have these two options available primarily with the star symbol and on top you'll see the recommended clients for a language are marked with a star so for PHP we have two clients PHP Redis and Predis so we'll be going with Predis or P Redis you can say and that can be downloaded from this GitHub repository and here you can see the instructions for installing and using Predis. So for loading the library we'll be using this statement require Predis autoloader.php and then connecting to Redis is creating a client and setting getting that key value pair. And here we will be actually passing the scheme host and port if it's listening on some other external server URL. So let's go ahead and click on clone or download and here download it as zip and that's all you need to do in order to download it. In the next lecture we'll see how we can make use of Predis with our Redis server on Windows. In this lecture we'll see how we can make use of the PRedis or Predis client and connect it to our Redis server that we have installed on our Windows operating system. So here we have the zip file and you can see that I have unzipped it and this is the set of files that we get. What we'll do is we'll copy the bin, src and other files excluding the examples. So here in my code view you can see that 
I have created a directory called Predis and inside that we have all the files required. Now, here you can see the index.php file. Now, all we are doing is calling the autoload.php which is residing inside the Predis directory. Here you can see it, autoload.php. So, this is what we are referring over here and then inside the try catch block remember we are connecting to our local server so here I am using the predis slash autoloader register and then creating the instance of a client and then finally printing it out over here in case of any exceptions I am just logging it out now the redis server that we have installed on our windows operating system runs as a service so here you can see that when the system starts this automatically runs so this server runs the redis server this is the service which runs the redis server and uh, now if i go ahead and execute this by clicking on this serve project with php extension this is what we are getting as output of print our redis client so you can see that it is currently connecting to localhost and the port is 6379 so it's listening on this port 6379 and the IP address is 127001 which is referring to our local host. Now when we connect to a remote server you will notice that connection string needs to be specified and here we'll specify the scheme using the TCP protocol and then the host which will be the remote IP address and then port. This we'll be actually exploring when we'll see connecting to a Redis server installed on Linux. So, in the next lecture, we'll take a look at how we can install Redis on Linux environment. And then from that point onward, we'll also explore how we can connect to that using the Redis client. In this lecture, we'll be taking a look at how we can install Redis on Linux operating system. So the first prerequisite is that we must have TCL program installed. And in order to install a TCL on Ubuntu, we can make use of sudo apt-get install TCL. And on Red Hat, we can simply make use of yum install TCL. Once we have TCL installed, the next thing we need to do is download the archive file Redis. So here you can see the latest stable version that we have is 4.0.6. So we can make use of the wget command to download that file. And once we have it, we can simply unarchive it and uh, then go into that directory using the cd command so you can see that cd redis version 4.0.6 and then use the make command to build the binaries so these are the steps that are required in order to install redis on linux in the next lecture we'll be actually exploring this by creating an aws instance and installing redis on it So here I'm logged into my AWS EC2 instance and uh, once logged in you'll be provided with this interface where you need to just write this command yum install tcl just ensure that you prefix it with sudo so we have sudo yum install tcl and let's press enter now and this is going to install tcl first and once that's done we'll be proceeding with downloading the redis zip file so for that we'll be using the wget command and over here we have provided that command and you can see that it has been downloaded now the version number is 4.0.6 so for that we will be unarchiving it over here And that's done. Now let's go inside that directory. Now we are inside that directory and make use of the make command. Let's press enter now. Now once everything is installed, you are good to go and launch your Redis server 
In order to launch your Redis server, first of all, you need to go inside the SRC directory. So here you'll be doing CD SRC. And once that's done, all you need to write is Redis dash server. And this is the command which will start the Redis server. Now in the next lecture, we'll see how we can connect to this Redis server from our PHP program. So once you ran the make command, after that what you need to do is just type src slash redis server and you can see that it will start the redis server and currently it's running on this port 6379 and the IP address of my instance is mentioned over here in my PHP file where I'm trying to connect to the Redis client. So here there's a syntax error actually. So this is how we'll be connecting. Now let's go ahead and run this and see it in action, how it connects to our remote server. So I'll be clicking on this run server and let's go ahead and print something over here so that we know that it has connected. And here you can see that now it is connected to my AWS EC2 instance on this port 6379. So that's how easy it is to actually connect to our Redis server using Redis or Predis client in our PHP. So in the next lecture onward we will be starting with the basics of Redis and how we will be using it in our project. Now before proceeding further it's time now to discover the data types that Redis supports. So the common ones that we will be actually making use of is a string. A string as we can say any general string like name of a person or name of a course subject. So that comes under data type string. Then we have list which is similar to a single dimensional array in PHP and using this list we can do operations like push, pop, shift, unshift and the elements that are placed in order or insertion. That's first in, first out. So that's what list data type is. Then we have hash and uh, it's basically used to map between string fields and string values. So kind of key value pair. Now they are the perfect data types to represent objects. For instance we can say a user with a number of fields like name and address, date of birth. Then we have set which is in a way similar to list except that it has no order and each element may appear only once. Then we have sorted set which is similar to the set that we just now discussed with a unique feature of values stored in a set. The difference is that each member of a sorted set is associated with a score used to order the set from the smallest score to the largest. So we'll be exploring all these in detail in upcoming lectures. In this lecture we'll see how we can store, retrieve and check for data values and uh, some of the commands that we'll be using for doing all this are set, get and exists. So these are the most important commands in Redis and these commands are used as per their name itself to store or set, retrieve or get and to check or exists from a Redis server. Now just like these commands the pRedis class that we have can be used to perform Redis operations by methods with the same name as commands. So here in our code view, so once we have our Redis client invoked using the Predis library, so we are saying set a key publisher with this value skill bakery. And then in order to check that key exists or not, we are saying Redis exists and then we are passing the key over here publisher. Now if the key exists, it's going to return true and in that case we will be retrieving that value using the get method. So Redis get and then we pass the key and the value associated with this key is then assigned to this variable which is published over here. And finally we are showing it to the user. We are saying echo publisher is and then the value that publisher variable stores is displayed. So using these three commands set, exists and get we are able to 
store, check, and retrieve data from a Redis server. So let's run this one in browser and see it in action. And here we are. You can see that the output is coming as publisher is still bakery. Now in the next lecture, we'll be exploring some more commands and how they can be used with the Predis client. In this lecture, we'll be taking a look at the increment and decrement commands in Redis. So we have INCR and DECR respectively. INCR is used to increment the value of a key by one and decrement or DECR is used to decrease the value of an integer key by one. Then we have increment by and decrement by. Now the difference between increment and increment by is that with increment by you can specify the value by which you want to increase the integer key value. And with decrement by you can reduce the value of a given key integer key by that many numbers. So let's go ahead and explore it via code. So here in this example you can see that I have got this integer counter. Key is counter and the value is zero initially. So I'm setting it using the set command. Then I'm making use of the increment command to increase the value of this counter key. And it is going to automatically update the value from zero to one. And the same is then stored using the get command in this counter variable. And that's what we are printing over here. We are further incrementing it one more. So from zero to one and then from one to two. And the same is then again stored in the counter variable and it's being printed over here. So initially the output will be one, two, and then we are making use of the decrement command. So decrement actually reduces the value by one and that's what will be stored in the counter variable. And finally that gets printed. Now with increment by you get the option to specify by what value you want to increase. So here you can see that the key counter is being incremented by 15. So here the value was one, adding 15 to it will make it 16. We further go ahead and increase it by five. So here 21 and then we are decreasing the value by 10 so it will be 11. Okay. So that's how it is working. And finally, the output is printed over here. Now let me run it in browser and show you. There we have it. Initially, the counter is one from zero to one, then two, and then again decremented by one, so one. Finally, we are increasing it by adding 15 to it. So 15 plus one, 16, and adding five more to 16 makes it 21. Then decreasing 10 from this makes it 11. So that's how we make use of the increment and decrement operator as well as increment by and decrement by operators in Redis. In this lecture we'll be taking a look at the list of commands that are used to actually work with lists in Redis. So the first one is L push, which is used to add an element to the beginning of a list. Then we have R push, which is used to add an element to the end of a list. Then we have L pop, which removes the first element from a list and returns it. Then R pop removes the last element from a list and returns it. Then we have L len, which is to get the length of a list. And we have L range, which is used to get range of elements from a given list. So all these commands we'll be exploring in the next lecture. In this lecture, we'll be actually exploring the commands that we discussed in the previous lecture on how to work with lists in Redis. So here you can see that we are making use of our push command to push this C sharp to this languages list. So our push as we discussed adds an element to the end of a list. So this is the first item in the list so the position doesn't matter in this case. But when we make use of PHP over here and we add it via our push this will be added at the end. Now coming on to L push, L push adds an element to the beginning of a list. So when we say add Python to the languages list, Python will be added before C sharp. And finally we are adding Java to languages using L push. So Java will also be the first item over here in this list, then Python, C sharp and PHP. Then we have L pop. 
Now lpop removes the first element from a list and returns it. So when we say echo redis lpop from this languages list, it's going to print Java because that's the first item in the list and remaining items will be Python, C Sharp and PHP. Then again we are making use of rpop which removes the last element from a list and returns it. Now last element in this list was PHP. So that's what will be printed over here and the remaining items in the list are now Python and C Sharp. Finally we are making use of ln which is used to get the length of the list. So here the items as you can see are only two. So the output will be two. And then we have redis l range. Now l range gets a range of elements from a list and we are doing print r on this. So the whole array will be printed. So now if I run this in browser, you'll see these lines are printed. So when we are doing echo redis l pop, Java is printed. When we are saying echo redis r pop, PHP is printed. Then we are saying echo redis ln then the total length of the list is printed as 2 and when we are making use of L range using printr this is the array which is printed so we have 2 python and c sharp now one thing i would like to highlight over here is the use of del command now if you will keep on refreshing this page obviously these items will be inserted that many number of times in this list and uh, that way you won't be able to get the desired result which we are explaining in this lecture. So what I have done is I have initially cleared out the key itself and then we are preparing it or initializing it with every page load. So that way the example remains consistent. Now in the next lecture we'll be taking a look at how we can work with hashes in Redis. Now that we have covered lists let's take a look at how we can work with hashes. So in order to work with hash we have certain set of hash commands which comes in handy. So the first command is hset which sets a key value on the hash. Then we have hget which gets a key value on the hash. Then we have hgetall which gets all key values from the hash. And then we have hmset which is used for mass assigning several key values to a hash. Then we have hdel which deletes a key from the object and finally we have h increment by or h i n c r by which increments a key value from the hash with a given value. So in the next lecture we'll take a look at how we can use these commands using our Prettis client in PHP. In previous lecture we explored the commands which we need to work with hashes. Now in this one we'll be exploring them in detail. So over here you can see that I have created the Redis client and then I have defined a key with this name John Matthew. So all the details over here are for this user John Matthew. Here you can see that we are making use of hset command which sets a key value on the hash. So this is the key John Matthew and then key value. So age 35 then country United States of America and then occupation is software engineer. And then finally we are setting a temporary key called delete and here we say data will be deleted. Now using the get method we are passing the key which is John Matthew over here and then we are passing the attribute age. So that will return the age that we have mentioned over here 35 and then similarly we are accessing country which will return United States of America and here you can see that we are making use of the del command to delete this data which is associated with the delete key. Finally we are incrementing the key age by 10 which will update it to 40, 45 actually and here we are making use of hmset. Now this hmset is used to mass assign several key values to a hash. So here we are assigning age, country and occupation. And finally we are making use of hgetall passing the master key to return all the data associated with this particular key. So let's go ahead and check it out in browser. So here in our browser you can see the results are coming out. Let me uh, take you step by step with the output over here. So initially over here in these first three lines we are setting the key and their default values. Now 
using the H get there was a typo actually it has to be H get not get so using H get we are retrieving the values age and country and we are printing them out so here we have age 35 and country United States of America next we are deleting the keys delete and age so these two are deleted and then again we are going with the H increment by so here in H increment by you can see that initialized with 35 and then again used H increment by and uh, provided 10 to it so initial value was 35 and then 10 added to it makes it 45 after that we used HM set to mass assign these three age country and occupation and uh, that's what we are printing over here when we are saying edge get all data so that's the data we are getting so this was an example of how to work with hash commands using printers in this lecture we'll be taking a look at the sets commands so these commands are used when we are working with sets in redis the first command is s add which adds n number of values to the key then we have srem which removes n number of values from a key and we have s is member which checks whether a value exists or not in a set and then we have s members which lists out all the values in a given set so we'll be taking a look at all these commands in the next lecture in this lecture we'll take a look at how we can make use of the sets command that we explored in our earlier lecture so over here as you can see we have a key defined called languages and then we are making use of the s add which adds n number of values to the key so here we are adding php and then again we are adding c sharp ruby and java to this particular key called languages further when we are saying s add and we are specifying the same value to the key then this value will be ignored because this already exists in our set after that you can see that we are making use of srem which is used to remove n number of values from a key so here from the languages key we are removing c sharp and ruby and then we are checking whether value c sharp is part of this key or not that is whether c sharp is member of this set or not which as you can see because we have removed it it's no longer part of the set and that's why it's going to return false so here I can do echo and finally we are making use of s members so s members basically lists all the values in the set and that's what it is going to do now let's go ahead and execute this so here you can see the value is coming as 0 which stands for false and then when we are saying s members it's showing all the members of that set which is php and java so here 0 is for false that's what we are echoing and then print r redis s members key so that's what it's returning zero array php and java so we added php and java and we removed c sharp and ruby so the final list is containing php and java so that was working with sets using Predis in php Redis also provides sorted sets so in order to work with sorted sets there are certain commands that we can make use of the first one being z add now all the sorted set commands starts with z so we have z add which adds one or more members to a sorted set or updates its score if it already exists then we have z card which gets the number of members in a sorted set next that we will be exploring is z count which counts the members in a sorted set with scores within the given values z range returns a range of members in a sorted set by index and z rem removes one or more members from a sorted set then we have z rank which determines the index of a member in a sorted set and z rev rank determines the index of a member 
in a sorted set with the scores ordered from high to low. So it's just the opposite of Z rank. Then we have Z score which gets the score associated with the given member in a sorted set. Next is Z range by score which returns a range of members in a sorted set by score. So these are some of the commonly used commands for sorted sets and we'll be exploring them in the next lecture. Previous lecture we explored how to work with sets using Predis. Now in this one we'll be exploring the sorted set commands and we'll see how we can make use of them using Predis. So here you can see that the first command that we are exploring is zadd. Now zadd adds one or more members to a sorted set or updates its score if it already exists. So we are adding this languages key. Do note that we have to prefix it with sorted underscore set colon. Then only this is going to work with Predis. If you just to specify the key name without specifying the sorted set prefix, then it's not going to work. So we have our key now as languages. Then we are specifying the score for each of these values 1, 2 and 3. So score 1 for PHP, 2 for C Sharp, 3 for Java. Once it's added in our sorted set called languages, we can make use of other commands. For instance, zcard, which gets the number of members in a sorted set. So here you can see that there are three members in the sorted set. The output will be three. Then we are saying zcount. Now zcount basically counts the members in a sorted set with the scores within the given values. So you can see that we are passing the key languages and then we are saying these are the two scores within which you have to find out the members. Now score 1 and score 2 between these two we are only having two. That is PHP and C sharp. So the count will be 2 over here. Next we are just printing everything. So that's using Z range which returns a range of members in a sorted set by index. So we are saying Z range passing the key over here and 0 to minus 1 means everything that's there in the sorted set and with the scores that's set to true. So it's gonna show you everything over here that we have along with its score. Next we are making use of ZREM which is actually used to remove one or more members from a sorted set. So we are removing Java from this set and then again we are printing it over here so that you can see the difference between these two earlier and the deleted version. Next we are making use of Z rank. Now Z rank determines the index of a member in a sorted set. So if I'm trying to say C sharp for this key, now this index is zero based. So C sharp as you can see over here is on this second position. So the index starts with zero so it will say zero one and that's what it's going to print over here. Now when we make use of Z rev rank that's going to count the number of elements from the bottom up. So this time as we are now only having two values because we removed Java from the list. So from bottom up if it's going to count C sharp will have the index value zero and that's what it's going to print over here. Then we have Z score. Now Z score gets the score associated with the given member in a sorted set. So if I want to see what's the score of C sharp, you can see I have specified 2. So that's what it's going to return. And finally we have Z range by score. So Z range by score returns a range of members in a sorted set by score. So I'm saying that, okay, if I'm passing you the languages key or set, then go ahead and find out the members that are there along with their scores having scores between this range 1 to 2. So 1 to 2 we have PHP and C sharp. That's what it will print. So let me now show you the output of all these commands. And there we go. The first which says Z card is now returning 3. Z count returns 2. Then we have Z range which returns all the elements. That's PHP with their score 1, C sharp 2, Java 3. Then we removed Java using the ZREM command. After that we again printed the same sorted set. 
Now this time it's going to print two values that's PHP with score 1 and C sharp with score 2. After that we had Z rank. So Z rank for C sharp index based was 1 and when we did rev rank it gave me 0 for C sharp. Then we had Z score which was publishing the score for key C sharp in the sorted set. So that was 2 and finally when we said Z range by score between 1 and 2 so we had this PHP and C sharp. If I go here and tweak it to just 1 so between 1 and 1 there's only 1 that's PHP. So now you can see the difference it's only giving me one value over here and that's PHP with score 1. So these are some of the commonly used commands for sorted sets that we have explored. As we know that we are making use of Redis as an in-memory data store so obviously there will be time when we need to make sure that certain keys expire and uh, for all such kind of stuff we will be exploring the commands that are available in Redis. The first one being is expire. It sets an expiration time which is in seconds for the key after which it is deleted. Then we have expire at which sets an expiration time using Unix timestamps for the key after which it is deleted. Then we have time to live or remaining time that is TTL. It gets the remaining time left for a key expiration. Then we have persist. When we make use of the persist command it makes a key last forever by removing the expiration timer from the key. So all these commands we will be exploring in the next lecture and we will see how we can use them using Predis. In this lecture we will be taking a look at the commands that we explored earlier. So here you can see that I have set a key which is containing this message saying expire in one hour. And then we are making use of the function or command called expire passing the key and then the time in seconds. So 3600 seconds equals one hour. That is this key will expire in 3600 seconds. If I go ahead and say expire at passing the key over here and then time plus 3600. So from current time it will add one hour to it and then it's going to expire. This TTL actually returns back the total amount of time remaining in seconds. So if you run this you'll come to know that how much time is there for this key to expire. And if I just make use of the command persist and pass the key to it then this particular key will never expire. So these are the commands which we use in order to set expiry or ensure that the key never expires. In this lecture we'll be taking a look at how to work with forms and riddles. So here you can see that I've created a very simple form which just contains a text box and a submit button. Now we are posting the data to the same form and the method is post. Now here we have connected to the Predis client locally and uh, then we are checking whether the fname variable of the global post variable is having any value or not. If it is having then we are assigning that value to fname variable and finally we are making use of the redis set command to set the value of first name that's the key with this value dollar f name. Now once the value is set it will be checked over here and using the get command will be fetching that value in this variable redis name and finally the value will be printed using the echo statement. So let's go ahead and uh, execute this now. So here if I go ahead and enter school bakery and submit it over here then you'll notice that the data gets posted and the value is now coming from the Redis cache. Now even if I reload this page you'll see that the value still remains the same because that's now part of the Redis cache. So using this way we can simply integrate our forms with Redis 